potential for greatness lives within each of us. I dare. My name is Nikki Dare. I dare was born of personal hardship, triumph, and the desire to succeed. I dare, the acronym for integrity of diversity, adaptation, resilience, and empowerment is the hallmark of my life, derived from learning to evolve through difficult circumstances. Growth experiences necessarily result from these challenges. Without the obstacles, we never would know the true meaning of success or feel the exaltation of triumphing over adversity. My personal mission, therefore, is to help you encounter your purpose and live your best, best life by unearthing your inherent potential and finding joy in the journey. I did, and so can you. It's about personal empowerment and unlocking your inner potential. I dare, therefore, is a way of life. Please join me to discover your inner potential by sharing some of our own challenges. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening and joining me today. Let's make it a blessed, joyful week this week. Thank you. Thank you for joining us at Nikki Dare Radio. Heard worldwide by millions of listeners with your lovely host, Ms. Nikki Dare. Our podcast hosted by Nikki Dare is your home for education to safety and survival, leadership and inspiration. Nikki Dare is the founder of iDare Inc., a registered 501c3 with its mission to educate and mobilize resources for preparedness and sustainability. IDARE is a grassroots credo and personal mission based on its pillars of excellence, integrity, diversity, adaptation, resilience, and empowerment. Ms. Dare's personal mission is to help you encounter your purpose by unlocking your inherent potential and finding joy in the journey. Nikki Dare is the published author of The Audacity of Veracity, a columnist, Women in the Field of Western Outdoor News, California's publication of Fishing and Hunting. Ms. Dare is a certified firearms instructor in rifle, shotgun, and handgun, RSO, range safety officer, and CERT, Community Emergency Response Training member, a FEMA certified training, women's advocate, transformational mentor, and a seasoned BPR change management consultant since her early 20s, in transforming companies, and decades later, she is reinventing her purpose. Nikki Dare's life has been spent passionately in helping others going through transformation, both personal and professional. And now, here's your lovely host, Ms. Nikki Dare. things as we already know on this planet whether we know it or not women as guiding force of principles and purpose we wear many different hats every single day in our lives throughout our journey uh, as a mother as a wife business owner entrepreneur you name it all we have multi skills we juggle every single day we're also solution makers problem solvers givers to the world we choose to practice self-love self-awareness self-care Seeking inward of our own innate power for all humans, after all, right? With emotional connection. Counterintuitive we are and insightful. With our imperfection, we still learn to grow, evolve with each other. With purpose and passion, we know we can achieve great things together. All right, guys. Bonjour. Aloha. Da. I'm Indonesian, so I'm going to say selamat pagi, you guys. Buenos dias. Welcome back. How are you guys doing? Thank you for joining us again this morning on We Talk Podcast. Our goal is empowering women to break through their limiting beliefs and achieve their personal 
as well as professional goals, making their voices heard here on We Talk podcast. This morning, I have this beautiful guest, Adelaida Cordova, and she is, <laughs> hi Adelaida, how are you doing, my dear? I'm good, how are you? Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks for having me on today. <laughs> Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Uh, another talented guest, Delala Cordova. I, I'm going to just give you the ins about her. She's a visibility creator who supports local authors, entrepreneurs, uh, women predominantly. She's an experienced uh, marketer, Kajabi expert, and also an online course creator for authors by using uh, funnels that generate revenues. Let's help me welcome our lovely guest this morning, Delala Cordova. And um, she can tell us all about what she does, what she's doing. But first of all, um, you know, good to have you on our show, by the way. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's going to be good. <laughs> I got a lot of... Yeah. yeah, yeah. let's dive into this. Everyone has a background story, right? Which led them to follow their purpose and passion. I want to hear your story, your personal journey that really, you know, what shaped you, what take you to where you are today. And then, you know, tell us why is this so important to you why you selected the profession or the career that you currently uh, have? The career that I'm currently in, I kind of fell into and, in, you know, my journey of finding what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> um, for those who don't know me, um, you know, my name is Delia Cordova, but I am half black and half white and there's nothing Hispanic about me. <laughs> um, so, you know, I grew up living in two different worlds. Um, you know, my, I'm, my mother is black and my dad is white. And, um, you know, throughout my life, I, I've, you know, faced a lot of adversity um, when it comes to being white or black. But, you know, I've never fit in with neither. But, um, you know, my ultimate passion or my ultimate goal in life is that I want to be the person that bridges the divide between both. And I want to be able to carry that message and, you know, create, um, you know, really great things across the world and, you know, and, and hopefully inspire, you know, mixed children like me because, you know, America is becoming a really big mixing pot. <laughs> um, you know, like I said, I, I faced a lot of adversity um, growing up, you know, being of both races because, you um, you know, during, during time I grew up, it was kind of like a racist type thing. Um, so I had to overcome a lot and, and get through a lot to get to where I am now. As a successful businesswoman yourself, entrepreneur, you know, facing these challenges and everything. And what about in your field, in your business field right now? You, you, you uh, share with us about that. Right. Well, a lot, with my industry at the moment, I, like I said, you told them that I do digital marketing. I actually own an agency here in Charlotte called Omnipresent Studios, and I have about six, about six person team at the moment. Um, and we are helping coaches, um, entrepreneurs, and authors to become visible online. Um, and I've been doing this since 2011. Um, you know, like, like I said, I was trying to get to my story, <laughs> but um, you know, when I first started, you know, I had the, that really uphill, you know, battle to get to where I'm at with my business, where it is now, um, because a lot of people didn't give me an opportunity to do what I do, being a minority and being a woman. Um, so when I fell into marketing, I got the opportunity to um, help a local business that was actually a computer shop at the time to use the use social media and you know use Craigslist and all those different things and build a website and um, build a presence online. And you know I figured at that point like you know they started getting in lots of clients, they started doing really well, and they were making really good money off of what I was doing for them online. So I like fell into it. Um, so, you know, I eventually went on and I started doing it as a side hustle for a lot of different little businesses. And, you know, I was, I was making good money doing it. So I was like, you know what, I don't, I don't want to work in a warehouse anymore. Um, because I was a, well, let me back up. I was a veteran before I'm a veteran now because I was in the military before. <laughs> so, um, thank you for your service. Uh -huh. Which branch? I was in the army. I drove trucks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> just, um, well, you know, and that's, that's right. Right? yeah, and that's what translated to my um, my warehouse career afterward because um, I'm also a single mother of five, 
And <laughs> um, I had, you know, to put food on the table when I got out the military and, you know, um, I obviously I couldn't go around driving trucks for the rest of my life. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I had to get into the warehouses and then, you know, doing the side hustle job with the marketing and this, this and that, and, you know, ultimately marketing is what I eat, sleep and breathe every day. I, I wake up passionate to do what I do. I, I go to sleep thinking about sales funnels, you know, how I can make things better, how I can do, you know, all these different creative things, um, you know, and how I can make people more money online. Um, it's what I do. It's what I breathe. It's what I love. Um, I don't think that, you know, I, the day goes by like where I could just take a, a mental break off uh, because I'm, I'm consistently always thinking like, I'll be like, Oh, I gotta call my client. I gotta tell them like, Hey, you're sleeping with, it. You know, you're yeah. sleeping with thinking stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it, it's, it's such a wonderful thing when you find your purpose, um, when you find what drives you, um, because, you know, before I had marketing, before I had digital marketing and before I had my, you know, my business and everything else, it was like just stumbling along, busting my arse off for what reason, you know, and I didn't have no drive. I was just getting up, going to work and doing the same thing and working in warehouses and, and doing really hard work for no reason when I have a lot to, to offer people, you know. Um, so I'm really fortunate that, you know, I, I, I found my purpose when I did, because now every day I get up and I, and I get to empower people. I get to spread people's messages um, across the internet. I get to um, help authors, you know, to bring, you know, they'll, they'll, usually um, authors that come to me, they're at book conception still. So I get to help them navigate that way to getting their books into stores and getting on shelves and, you know, getting it into people's hands ultimately. Um, and you know, it, it's a great, it's a great feeling, um, when you're helping people to navigate their way to birthing their dreams, whether it be business, whether it be books, whether it be services or whatever that they want to do. Um, and you know, I take a really, um, how I want to put it keen. I, I'm really keen for women entrepreneurs. Um, cause you know, I, I hate for anybody to have to show, I mean, because I, I, mean, I have employees and all that, but I really hate if I have to think about going and getting a JLB. Like, <laughs> I can't even say it. <laughs> I, I can't even say it anymore because I don't want it. <laughs> and, you know, right, when, right. when you go through the entrepreneur roller coaster and then one day you just, oh, like, God, oh, yes. You just wake up, you're like, screw this, I'm going to go get a J-O-B. And then, you know, I'll come over here, I'll get at the computer, like, I'm going to put my resume, and like, I don't even have a resume, because I don't know how to put one together. <laughs> so then you start right. screw it. Because you, you have, right, because you have thoughts, you are determined already, you have all, all it takes to make yeah. it go. But, you know, on the same, cap, on the caveat of that is that a lot of entrepreneurs would fail in a few more, a few years, the first few years, because they don't understand how to, you know, to put together a strategic uh, business plans or something yes. like that. But with you, if you follow that, the, the, the drive, because, you know, anybody can say, well, I want to be this, I want to be that, but you don't have the drive inside because you're seeing right. it, somebody does it well, somebody does it well, and then, you know, I want to be that. Yeah, there's no cookie cutter here. And then right. everybody is compromised. And don't, don't get me wrong, you know, not every client I've had has been successful. You know, as a, as a marketer, I can only hold somebody's hand so far the way. Eventually, you know, especially with social media, it's a relationship building deal. You got to be present in your own business. A lot of people think, oh, I'm just going to have this idea. I'm going to do all this, this and that. And then I'm just going to hand it off to these people and let them manage that. And I'm not going to be present. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. And you know, depending on what that business is, that might be fine. But with you being, if you're an entrepreneur, an author or, or a coach or any of those things, like you have to be present in the now. You have to be, you know, working your social media. You have to be engaging. You have to be building that know, like, and trust factor in relationships. Um, you know, it's not how, always. How many people now are on social media? You know, Say what? How many, how, many, how many people now are on social media? I mean, for example, Instagram. There's just so much traffic. I mean, you go, you can take. It could take you the whole day just to look at your feed, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what, do you, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, everything, like you said earlier, everything starts with a strategy. And if you don't have a really well-oiled strategy or a plan put together, then you're going to fall behind. 
Um, I, you know, always plan everything within quarters, you know, by the end of the quarter, we're already planning and strategizing and putting ahead for the next quarter. Um, you gotta, you gotta really work your business. Like it, it, just because it's online and anybody can make a business online, um, you gotta sit back and gotta think about what is the purpose? What's the project? Oh, what's my scope? Who's my audience? And you gotta think all this stuff in months in advance. Um, so that you can have your contents ready, you can have your marketing campaigns already thought out, and you're not doing things last minute. Because a lot of people are running their business as a last minute thing, um, and that's where a lot of them fail because they don't look at it like they're supposed to. You gotta look at it like a big corporation company does. Coca Cola already knows what they're doing for the next five years. Do you? You know? Um, exactly. You've got to have to be a visionary as well as, as, as an entrepreneur because that's a key to success uh, because you're the one who, who knows what the dream looks like, you know, to make it reality. Everybody yeah. else, you delegate this task and everything like that. Yes, you got to have to treat like a corporation. Yes. I mean, I know how to make it, how to bring it and make it look like it's supposed to be online so that it'll start making you money. But ultimately for it to last and to continue converting, it takes a lot of innovation. It takes a lot of testing. It takes a lot of, you know, different ideas and implementation of different strategies um, because not everything hits off the first time with marketing. <laughs> Depending on the industry that you're in, I guess, I this is like a really, really, um, I don't know what to very easy questions to answer or what uh, or we don't know the numbers is that because everything is not cookie cutters so everything is customized mm -hmm. depending on the industry that you're in how, how what's the average of a let's just say somebody who just want to start a business um, uh, fresh out of college and then he, he said okay screw the corporation I just want to go build something online let's just say e-commerce want to sell hats and this and that take us to how to build that online, how to build that with the uh, with your expertise and skills, and you know the tools that you offer, the services that you offer. So he wants to build an online e-commerce store, right? Well, you need several different thing, different um, factors online. Okay, one of them being your e-commerce website, and just, you know you can build out your own website or you can use um, a third party website like Shopify and those different things. There's, there's, so, there's several of them out there nowadays. So um, many of them now. <laughs> yeah. It just gets complicated. Everybody wants want to sell offer the same services, you know? Oh, oh yeah. Um, but ultimately you got to decide, um, you know, my, my thing is that everything that I build out for my clients, like I want them to own it. Um, you know, so when you're using third party sites, even when you're using social media, you got to remember that you do not own it. So you have to um, use it as a tool and not as a steadfast place of what you're going to do with your business. So if you build an e-commerce site, build an actual website, put your e-commerce stuff on it, and then use Shopify in those different places as tools. Um, but make sure that you own it completely. And if somebody builds you a website, make sure that they're not going to hold it hostage. Um, you know, one month you can't pay them or two months they can't pay them, that your website is always going to be there. Because if you're throwing thousands of dollars into your website, you got to make sure that you own that creative um, asset. Um, two, um, so you got to have a, a marketing strategy, uh, you know, from social media to SEO to um, traditional marketing where you're going to do flyers and this, this and that, um, what type of advertising, if you're going to do PR, like, you know, what we're doing now with blog, podcasts and blogs, or, um, if you're going to reach out to local media and all those different things, you need to have multiple traffic strategies to get to that e-commerce site. Otherwise it's all for Neil <laughs> and it's going to take you listing your site on multiple directories. For example, my mother, you know, I helped her build her business, of course, because she won't let me not. And um, she sells uh, her <laughs> business, default. <laughs> her business is called Lucky Contestant, and she creates um, contestant wear for the Price is Right. And you know, she's been doing it for two years now, and now her revenue is like consistent at about two k plus a month. And that's her. That you know fills all of the gap that she needed from retiring. Um, so, you know, with being consistent, making sure that she's using multiple platforms to sell her wear or her shirts and, you know, creating new designs and doing all kinds of stuff every day, um, 
and she's able to use that e-commerce site that we built for her to do that but we have a multiple traffic strategy for that whether it be from ebay to um the different like teespring and all those different type of shirt stores um online you know online shirt make you know those drop the drop shipping ones because she doesn't have she's drop too, she's older so she's like in her 60s so she doesn't want to have to go and actually be boxing up t-shirts and stuff so <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah right drop shipping is what what she what we're what we chose to do um but you know it, it's about multiple streams of traffic and where you can generate that traffic from and you know because a lot of people think that you know facebook and is the in all place for uh, generating traffic, you know, Facebook and SEO, but it, it, it's ultimately not. You need to have your products. If you have products and you have your products in multiple different places. Um, so that, you know, it, it's, you need to have omnipresent strategy. Let me tell you that. So that when people are looking for your exact product, when they enter that keyword, that it, everything for it pops up and it's from multiple different places. Because if you only have it listed in one place, then it's probably not going to rank when you go into Google or whatever different things, you know? Um, the more places you can put those strategic keywords, the more places you can put your products, more um, joint ventures or um, podcasters or bloggers or guest bloggers, whatever you're going to do, the more places you can put your products, the better um, in the long run. Even though it might seem like it's not going to help you, um, you never you'll be surprised where your sales will come from years from now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. now. Let's talk a little bit about uh, SEO. You mentioned that is a search engine optimization. Uh, mm -hmm. What does that differ with uh, algorithm? Everybody seems to talk about that in the as a marketer. You know, uh, well, share with us that. I that. Yeah. Um, well, SEO al algorithms. Um, Every platform has an algorithm, okay? <laughs> um, but SEO is, you know, search engine optimization. So your Google, your Bing, your Yahoo, all those different places where people are searching for information and it's, you know, catching and bringing those up. Now, there's a bunch of different criteria um, that, you know, Google and those different platforms use to rank your content as to where it needs to be, um, which is why I'm telling you it's important for it to be everywhere so that when people type that, it is a right. popular search and it comes right up. Um, now, you know, Facebook and different social media platforms also have an algorithm as well. Um, but it's more, you know, it, there's, there's different types of algorithm. Everything almost has an algorithm, <laughs> but you got your algorithm for your Facebook ads. So, and the, what the algorithm, um, basically means is that's the system that they use when they built the platform that makes it simple for your content to get seen and they have different criteria for every different platform and you know you just gotta learn how each platform works and how each algorithm is formatted so that when you do go to run ads or you go, do go to um, place your content out there um, you know do we get found that you are following the best you know practices possible for it what are some bots? Um, you know, I'm going to take you back, for example, uh, my website, nikita.com. Um, I've received, I know, it is a pretty low number. I'm an average, probably about 900, less than 1,000 a week. Mm -hmm. I just saw recently, a couple of weeks ago, 21, 22, 2,500 a week. Mm -hmm. And I tried, the analytic came, you know, report, it generated the report automatically, and then I read it and reviewed it. And I said, what is going on? So I, the first thing I did was call my tech support guys. And I said, what's going on? Explain to me what this is. Um, you know, of course, well, this is, you know, they, they speak in tech language, of course. <laughs> I mean, I tech it too, but not that deep. <laughs> and I said, okay, what's the bottom line? Um, they, they said, yeah, it varies. It could be bought. But when I look at it, yeah, there's a Google search from Chrome, and then, you know, I have an analytic that says, you know, where it came from, who's reading it from which country and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. What is uh, the algorithm and bots and the hashtag, hashtags? Is that what, <laughs> right, the hashtag, people love hashtag. Everything has to be hashtag these days so they can find you, I guess. All right, so those are like three different things, basically. <laughs> um, uh, Whew. Um, okay, so let's start with um, hashtags because <laughs> hashtags are um, that's the easy one. <laughs> Everybody seems to want one. You gotta have hashtags, right, to find to be found. 
Right. Well, you, the whole point of hashtags is to make things searchable, make things easy to be found um, when you're using just different social medias. Um, so a lot of businesses and, you know, for a lot of events, um, it's really popular to create hashtags so that when people are looking for things about one particular area, all they got to do is use that hashtag and find it. Um, it also helps when people are looking for different things for relevant hashtags. Like if you're going to, if you're posting about law of attraction and, um, you know, self-care or something like that, and you're hashtagging, hashtagging law of attraction, those who are really into law of attraction and, and are, you know, using, they're searching for those hashtags, they'll be able to um, connect with you on that same information, use, you know, through the hashtags, especially on Instagram. Um, we have hashtags with Facebook, but I don't see people really, unless you're going and searching for something, I don't see people really using them the right way with Facebook. Um, but ultimately, they're meant to lead people to the same type of content that is within the same genre or, you know, that's relevant to um, people's interests. Um, and then, you know, you hashtag to stay on top of the feed and stay trending too. Um, but it, I like to use hashtags creatively and I like to create my own hashtags. Um, that way I can sort my stuff out from everybody else's and then people who are really interested in mine. And people like hashtags just to, you know, feel the reality of it and it, it makes them feel special when they're using different hashtags, you know? <laughs> the hashtag, <laughs> you love that, you know? <laughs> I hashtag everything. <laughs> I hashtag my profile even so people can find. But people think that, you know, um, it, you know, some people understand it, some people don't. Um, but it's important, like if you're using Instagram, some, you know, some people tell you to use like 30, you can use up to 30 hashtags on Instagram. But the thing is, um, they'll just put a bunch of, you know, random hashtags when you really need to make sure that they're relevant hashtags and that that's the type of audience and traffic that you're trying to uh, attract to what you're doing, you know? Um, and then you mentioned bots. <laughs> so uh, I want to clarify, you know, because you mentioned bots. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly which bots there are because there's several different clients. There's chat bots. There's, um, you know, bots that, that people run uh, for software. There's, um, I'm not sure which ones you want to talk about, but <laughs> there's, there's many different kinds. Well, of well, well yeah, I, I want to talk about the, the relevant reflecting to the website, my website, because I, I, I was stunned because is this, is this real? I mean, is it because it's double because of what? Is it because I, I is it spammer maybe, you know? So my, my conclusion was, oh, it's got to be bots because my, my website should be weekly basis, should be hit, traffic hits like about less than 1,000. Could be 1,000 all-time high, but now it's like 22, 2,500 all-time high a week. Um, what is your, do you have a conversion rate for that too, like with opt-ins and different things like that? Um, I didn't look at it really closely at that time, but I did make a call to my tech support and then he said there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and I go, okay, well, let's evaluate the next weekend, the next week, even the same. It's consistent. It's consistent. In fact, I've got other subdomain after Nikki Dare and then it's consistently increased as well, the hits, the traffic hits. So. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? So what I did was trying to get a spammer like Clean Talk. Uh, is it Clean Talk or something like that? Some organization to clean your um, spammers. I, I, I think I just I just um, upgraded my service with them too. Um, something like that. So I don't know if this is something that I you know every marketer should look. I mean every uh, interpreter should look into. Whether I mean you tell me. Tell I mean, me your, your thoughts. On I, could, I couldn't really tell you too much about looking at the data, but um, maybe you've had a, you know, a raise in the amount of traffic that you're getting. Maybe people are consuming your content more than once. And there could be so many different factors as to why that's happening. It might not always be spammers. Um, it might be that your content got put somewhere and now it's pretty popular, right where, wherever somebody put it. Um, is it like one particular page that is getting hit more than another? Or like I said, are, what's your conversion rate? Do you have opt-ins? Are people opting in more? Um, is it new new people? Yeah, it, it, there was it, exactly. I mean, people like to watch the videos on my um, the index, the uh, the front page. They spend about so many you know seconds or a minute plus. <laughs> I believe it. It's like a minute plus. 
you guys don't have anything better to do just staring at my website front page, okay, you know, for a minute plus. Um, I'd be that's the most common. <laughs> I really can't say you know, without looking at your, at your at the data and um, seeing where you know uh, about what the traffic looks like. You know, Google Analytics will give you a bunch of really good insight as to uh, where traffic is coming from. Um, if here might be a kicker too for you, if your traffic is coming from places like Indonesia and from around the world, um, they will hit up your site so hard at, if they like your content and you know i don't understand why they do that um you know they're like they're really like if you ran a facebook ad and you did it for worldwide all those people from indonesia philippines whatever they're gonna hit your site so hard but they're not really gonna do much as for far as like you know purchasing or anything like that they're just consuming your content and they're bouncing you know um so you know they might that might be a part of it. I, I would look. I wouldn't know without looking though. <laughs> so I know for my okay, um, right, yeah, I, yeah. On the countries that I saw, uh, based on the analytic report, I saw uh, USA pretty much is the 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 uh, number one. The second one is Europe, and um, you know. I think Indonesia fall into like five or six. Number five or six. Yeah, that's good. But that's yeah, USA good. is still. Like, that is of the of the people who are looking at them on website, nikidera.com. Yeah, I have no idea. As long as it says USA and, and Europe and it's you know those English speaking countries that are, are relate to you, um, I think you might need to place a really good offer on your front page. <laughs> See if you can make some uh, okay. okay. <laughs> even in my podcast, even in my podcast, people are listening. Uh, there was one time, depending on the topic that we discuss. Uh, on the podcast, uh, there's a couple of controversial ones that I, I talked to with a couple of guests of mine on board, and it was listened, downloaded it, listening, I mean, tuning in uh, through iTunes podcast or through, um, what do you call this, a smartphone, because we received the analytic in the back office, in the back office, um, it's about 30, the, the all-time high was about 30, I want to say 34, 35,000 listeners, mm -hmm. so I'm impressed. And I'm like, you guys are really right. listening to my podcast. <laughs> That's the reason why I want to do this again. You're so funny because you're like, I might have spammers. And I'm like, girl, you just got a lot of good fans. You're like, you just run in traffic. That's all. People are trying to figure out what you do. Well, let me. <laughs> right, but wait, 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 hang on. There's a caveat on that. There's always a caveat on this. I, I do not have that much engagement. I think it's just because of my also presence on social media because people want to see more of that, more of the content posting. But then I'm not out there too much because I'm always on the back scene. You know, I, I hired a marketing company before and, you know, I think you and other podcasts, uh, you know, experts on this in this field said to me, suggested that, suggested to all of us that if you're doing that, doing it on your own. Because yep. there's nothing best to say it from your own than hiring anybody, somebody else, meaning people who just, hey, post this, even though you briefed them already. Because I woke up one time and it's like, that's not what I talked about. I briefed you guys already. And this was the talking heads. This is what we, we, we agree, you know, some of the things that we agree on on the schedule. And that's why I hate offer. I mean, I offer social media because it is a good, you know, money maker. But the thing is capturing their client's voice, using their already created content. And, and there's so many um, really important factors that has to happen when you're working with somebody. So I, we offer the posting, so we'll create the graphics and, and we'll help you write the post. But we're not going to do, we'll schedule that type of stuff for you, but it has to go through a pre-approval process. Um, and that's why that, that whole, you know, quarter type deal is important because you have to review all that content, make sure it's good, make sure it's what you want. Um, but ultimately, ultimately over everything, none of that means anything anymore unless you are using video and you are showing up and actually being there and engaging and, and talking to people. You can pay out the wazoo for marketing services that you don't need that are gonna not gonna get you any engagement. And you know, I, you know, as a market, I'm gonna be honest, I you gotta show up. Um as I can <laughs> as a, a post, let's say it's a numbers game. It's a numbers game. Um, for example, for my, my social media, I got like 25,000 people on there. Like you said, my engagement is at a good rate, but it's not at like, you know, what you would think of having that many people on a page. Um, 
So it's a numbers game. So if I got 24,000 people, um, out of 24,000 people, Facebook is going to show my content to about one to 10%, maybe probably less, somewhere between there, right? Depending on uh, multiple different factors of engagement, how, how many people are liking it, so on and so forth. Um, so I can post a picture and it'll reach maybe about less than 100 people, I want to say. But I can post a video and it will reach hundreds and thousands of people, you know? Um, it, it's not what it used to be um, where you post a picture and a meme and different things and everybody be like, ah, you know what I mean? This is, Facebook is a personal place. It's where people are making connections and building relationships. Posting on your business page is not going to get you anywhere. You got to show up. <laughs> So is this a, a, is a new trend, basically? Like, like I said earlier, too, I think it's off, off live, um, off the tape that I mentioned that, yeah, people are suggesting me to do a video because the people want to see some faces connecting to the voices and everything. I think, I, it, you know, yeah, it's, I agree totally with that. So is this something that moving forward in the business and digital, as a digital marketing expert yourself, um, what to expect more out of this, you know, in the, in the years ahead? Well, you know, last year, Facebook gave us their five-year plan, right? And their whole plan is on a strategy that people are going to be using video. Um, and they're going to, you know, like the new one is that people are going to be using their phones. So when you're going to, you know, make your videos, it's got to be the length, length ways of your phone because that's how people are consuming the content. So video is, you know, the number one thing to do. But the thing is, it has to be, you know, short and sweet and engaging um, when you're doing video. People don't want to consume, uh, you know, in their social feeds, you know, 30, 40 minutes worth of content. They want something that's quick and consumable, and then they can scroll through whatever else they're going to do. So, um, and that, you know, so you got to get really creative and really, you know, uh, specific what you're doing, and it has to have purpose. Um, so you got to catch them and be able to keep them on the video and then hopefully get them to um, come and know, like, and trust you or, you know, come and visit your page or go to your website, whatever the call to action is for that. But ultimately, you want to build that relationship within a few minutes and, and then, um, you know, hopefully they'll come over your way and be your friend and do all those different things. Um, you can make them into buyers. <laughs> or so, be able to sell like, them something eventually. Right. I think there was a conversion rate on that. I, I spoke to somebody recently that says that you got to have to reach out so many people and then you got to have to do so many uh, connecting, yep. uh, you know, through your building relationship process. And yep. then this percentage, I think it's like as low as 1% out of so many process. So many, uh, yeah, so many process until they really buy actual become convert into a yeah. sale. And, and here's the thing. Um, so before a few years ago, it was like, five, you need to touch somebody is what, what it's called in the sales process is touch, right? You need to touch your prospect um, at least five times before. But now um, a, another marketer that I've heard, you know, he's saying that it takes up to 22 touches of the same person before they purchase. So you got to have this, yeah. through this, okay, through a digital uh, device, platform yeah. of some kind, okay, yeah, so that's incredible, I mean, you know, the, the, the trend, but then, you know, you know the rate of the growth on this with the social media and all of this, and then you set multiple streams, of course, of uh, traffic, traffic that you got to have to strategically uh, place out there, but it's exponentially exponentially at the rate of seconds you know i mean you know you can do do the scheduling you can do yeah. all of this if you it's an automation management i guess i should say that email yes. marketing automation yes and um i'm glad you brought up email automation because that's what funnel, funnel 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 i want to talk to you about funneling yeah. because people are just like you know ask me about that things like what funnel what this like i thought it was like I'm an old that's, school, okay? You can tell I'm an old school, <laughs> but I'm a nerd. <laughs> I like to learn new things. I mean, you know, with, with all of you young generation and everything. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, sales funnels, sales funnels and um, email marketing is my passion because I love those both. But, um, okay, so you want to make sure that wherever you can in your business, you can automate it because you got to take it off your plate one way or another. And if you, if you pre-plan and automate in advance, it's going to be taken care of and you ain't got to pay nobody else to do it. Okay. You just take 
maybe two, two or three days, sit down, plan your content, plan your emails, put it all in the automator and you're done with it. Boom. <laughs> and you already know what you're doing for the next three months. So then all you got to focus on is your live content and your live, um, your videos and those other type of create, you know, um, things that you're doing along with your sales campaigns. Um, so let me start with that. <laughs> um, now, when you're creating a sales funnel, you want to make sure, you know, because it, it, it goes, goes so many ways, but ultimately a sales funnel is this. You're taking your traffic from all this posting and these videos and um, X, Y, and Z being, being our SEO and all these different places, wherever your traffic is coming from, you're sending this traffic to somewhere where they can learn about you. Well, nine times out of 10, it's with a really good juicy opt-in or offer or something. You want to build your email list. Now, a lot of people, this is, it's not an easy thing to do. And a lot of people will give up on building a list. But the thing is, if you can build your list, it is a gold mine. And I, I'm, not, I'm not talking, a, I, I'm being quite serious with this, okay? <laughs> I want everybody to really take me serious with this. Because... <laughs> Um, if you can, if you have a list, like um, even if it's 3,000 or 2,000 or 100 people, and it's people who have opted into saying, yes, I like you, yes, I like your content, <laughs> um, then you're going to be able to, you know, later on keep them engaged. But when you have your marketing campaigns, you're going to be able to sell them and you have people already waiting for whatever you have coming. Um, for example, I have a client, um, he has a list of about 4,000 people. Every time I create a sales letter and I send it out to them, I get at least, you know, six to eight K back in sales every time. Your list is gold. You want to build that. Um, so wherever you're sending the traffic to, send them to where you can get, they can get on your list um, or get something. You got to give them something to, to get something back from them, especially if you're asking for information. Um, you got to make sure that you're consistent with your emails and engaging, whether it be through, you know, with social media and your emails and all that. But after that, it's just to make it, making sure that you have a process for your sales um, that is really airtight and it makes sense and it's consistent. So you need to sit back and think about from point A, where they see me, to point Z, where they, you know, hopefully buy, because Z is like tw letter 27, right? <laughs> Um, right. All the way to point Z. What Mailchimp was already throwing bananas already, right? The Mailchimp guys—they're already throwing so many bananas. I think we already overfed here. <laughs> but what ultimately you got to sit down and you got to think: What is my customer's journey, and what does it look like? Does it make sense? Um, and, you know, you, ultimately, you're not really going to know until you have your whole sales funnel up and running and you see the data coming in. And then you're going to say, okay, I have a landing page or I have this opt-in page that has this great offer. I think it's a great offer. And what you're going to learn is that um, either it is or it's not. And if it's not, then how can you make it better? And you got to look at that data. You just got to consistently improve because not everything that you put up is going to hit off the first time. I don't care who you are. <laughs> Everything you put up is not going to hit off. It takes yeah. consistency. It, it takes, um, you know, playing with, you know, different, you know, split testing and um, making your offers better, changing your copy on your pages. Doing, you know, there's a lot of things that you probably need to do in order to get your sales funnels to work how you want them to. But a lot of people, they, they'll build it all up, they'll put it all out, and they're like, nobody bought nothing. I'm done. And it's like, that's not how it works. That's not how you gotta have to test it out. You're just at this early stage right now because yes. failures is another opportunity for you to get. Before um, before we forget, there is a Kajabi, um, you know, name of Kajabi. I'm not familiar with that. Can you tell us and share with us what that is first of all, and then you know what what does it you know how how effective is that with all of those things that we're we're talking discussing? Well, Kajabi is my Actually. jam. <laughs> Kajabi is my jam. Um, what basically Kajabi is, it started out as an online e-course platform, but since it has started, it, it has grown into being an all-in-one resource where you can do your email, um, email marketing automation, you can build out your e-course, you can sell your products, you can do your webinars, um, you can basically have your whole website inside of Kajabi. 
And a lot of my clients, they, they do that. Um, I love Kajabi. I've sold, you've used Kajabi for book sales. I've used Kajabi for um, A to Z. Like there's so many different things because at the end of the day, you um, have click funnels and all these different one, all these different builders, but they're difficult to use. They're not, you know, they're really different. Whereas Kajabi, it's a really easy process. They have great tutorial videos there. Um, they have 24 seven, you know, uh, support. And I, I love it because everything's all under one roof and it's all in house and it, it's not expensive. I mean, it's expensive if you, depending on where you're at with your business. Um, you know, mm -hmm. for some be expensive, for some not but it allows you to automate your whole process super easy without using 50 million different tools. Um, you know, cause a lot of people got MailChimp and then they have uh, auto get response and then they have, um, you know, their, their click funnel and then they have uh, WordPress and then they have this and then they have that and all these different subscriptions. By the time you, you pay for all this, those subscriptions, you could have done the same thing in one place with Kajabi and, um, you know, been supported through the process. So I love Kajabi. Kajabi's my jam. So <laughs> Kajabi is a new trend right now. I think everybody talks about that. It's a buzzword right now. Um, yeah, that was my question because I, you know, obviously it sounds like a passion to you that you've had and then you just like falling in you said and then it makes a it's a money-making career out of this right yes. um i know that we're running out of time a little bit i know that we can discuss a few more minutes what are your personal advices to other women out there listening as far as like um empowering them or even from that aspect or even um, as a as a solo entrepreneur let's say or entrepreneur that a small business owners that's listening out there uh, who are struggling with this, what are your business advice to them? All right. First off, it's, it's going to be difficult and expect it to not be easy. And when you feel like it's too hard, that means you're about to get to the right place. Get a mentor, get a coach, reach out to somebody, think things through, sleep on stuff. <laughs> uh, you know, um, that's what you do. <laughs> If something's not working, take a time out, look at the process, collect the data and see how you can improve it. Look at, you know, look at other people's, um, you know, comparison to what you're doing. Go compare your stuff to theirs and figure out why they are, why their stuff is working. If it will make sure first that it's actually working, but why is their stuff working and what can you do better? Um, don't give up. Talk to somebody <laughs> ultimately. So and stay consistent. I, uh, yeah, that, that's key. Staying consistent and everything like that. If I may offer information or your contact information to uh, people that are listening out there seeking your services, obviously, I mean, it's very crucial, uh, some of the steps. H how can we reach you? Websites, um, workshop. In fact, I also want to ask you what you're doing uh, as far as upcoming ventures and mm -hmm. any, any exciting plans. Yeah. Um, well, everybody can reach me at DelilahCordova.com or um, there is MarketingInCharlotte.com um, where you can reach my agency directly. Um, and as far as upcoming events, um, I have, you know, I have a lot going on this year, but the number one event that I have is going to be with the Charlotte Black Film Festival that I am partner with. I am on the board. Congratulations. Yes. Um, which is actually going to be happening April 11th through the 14th. And we're expecting a really big crowd of um, a really diverse crowd. Um, Cause that's the whole point they brought me on. So I can bring that diversity together. Cause that's what I like to do. <laughs> um, so uh, we are going to be supporting authors and entrepreneurs in the digital. Um, Cause there's a, uh, let me go back up a little bit. Um, there's a whole section called the digital village expo and we have a whole power up stage we're going to have non-stop all day motivational speakers entertainment um there's a lot to learn and a lot to do when you come to the digital expo portion of the charlotte black film festival so we got the films we got the fashion we got uh digital and tech we're, we're, we're bridging the divide between all these different things in the film industry um ultimately um we got uh, several big company. I can't name like all the companies, but um, so I, I'm not sure the legalities of that right now, but we have several different really big name brand companies coming through. Um, there's going to be great exposure for authors who want to bring their book from manuscript to script. 
um, and hopefully uh, digital, you know, tech people who want to, you know, bring their new innovations and all those things to the vendor area so that they can get exposure for it. It's going to be a huge event. Huge event. <laughs> so and, April. And, yeah, and, and information, would that be, yeah, information will be available on your website, delalacordova.com? Um, yeah, it'll be available there, but it's also at charlotteblackfilmfestival.com. <laughs> You got it. You got it. All right. I really appreciate all that information. I would like to see you back after that. When is that? April, right? So maybe we check back with you after April uh, 11, which is tomorrow. <laughs> this is air on April 10th. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'd like to have you back again, uh, Delilah. Uh, you're so wonderful. Live your life completely grounded with your truth as well as beauty and power. And this is all what we're all about. You know, collaboration, not competition. I am really running out of time right now. But like I said, I wanted to invite you back again because there's so much to learn from you, obviously. This is all about collaboration, guys. Sharing, learning, rise together. Because you never know our journeys and our stories, compelling stories can be someone's answer, someone's missing pieces in their lives, you know. Um, so stick around. The final say that you wanna you wanna share with us, Delilah, before we we go. Well, just keep your pursuit to happiness. Make sure you find your purpose at the end of the day and make it happen. <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> That's right. Just make it happen, guys. Thank you so much for, um, I learned quite a bit. I took a lot of notes, by the way. And for our listeners, <laughs> if you enjoy listening to this, please do post and share the podcast to others. Share it, like it, tweet it out, Facebook like it, you know the best. I always say this and ask you guys to do just one simple thing. It's not much, I ask. It feeds your soul and it feeds the soul of your friends and others around you. See you next time on our We Talk Woman Empowerment with our goal to bring women empowering other women to break through their limiting beliefs and achieving their personal and professional goals. Healthy mind promotes healthy body. Thank you to our lovely guest, Delilah. We'd love to have you back again soon. Yeah. All right, love, I gotta go. Stay safe, stay vigilant. I'm Nikki Dare, your host. Thanks, guys. God bless. Bye. Some viewers, I need to be your host. God bless. You have been listening to Nikki Dares Radio, a podcast of sustainability with your host, Ms. Nikki Dare. To learn more, please visit Ms. Dare's websites, education.nikkidare.com. Workshops on safety preparedness, situational awareness are available. Also available, the Transformational Coaching Series. For corporate and private group pricing, please contact us. She also offers both private and group classes in firearms training, handgun, rifles, and shotgun for individuals and families and home invasion scenarios and her other outdoor activities and her passion for fitness and upcoming classes. Follow her on LinkedIn and her social media, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Pinterest, and Facebook. Or simply watch her tutorial videos. You can subscribe to her YouTube channel, Nikki Dare. All about her books and inspirational quotes can be found on her website, 
books.nickydare.com. Check out her newest website, travel.nickydare.com, for all travel resources, savings, and tips. Her calendars, both of living in purpose and passion, as well as her exclusive edition of Firearm Safety, are available for order on her website, nickydare.com. All of her broadcasts are available for free download on iTunes podcast, Nikki Dare. For more details on opportunities for sponsorships and speaking engagements, please email us at education at NikkiDare.com. Join her next time, Living in Purpose and Passion. Our mission is to live a sustainable life with your host, Nikki Dare. <laughs>